Few would dispute that Black Isle Studios is really one of the best things to happen to computer role-playing games. Uh, Black Isle first carved its niche uh, sometime around five or six years ago with a game called Fallout, and ever since then has, has delivered a lot of really fantastic role-playing games, uh, including the Baldur's Gate series, Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale, and, and sequels to some of these. So uh, Black Isle really has been uh, the cornerstone of computer role-playing for years now, uh, and uh, knowing that, it's easy to get excited about uh, Lionheart Legacy of the Crusader, which is the latest game from the studio. Uh, for what it's worth, the game wasn't developed internally at, at Black Isle, nor was it developed by uh, BioWare, the company that uh, does the Baldur's Gate series, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that the game is going to be better or worse. Uh, but in this case, uh, unfortunately, Lionheart really isn't quite as good as its predecessors, even though it does have uh, some similarities to them. Uh, it's also got, you know, somewhat of an open-ended uh, character generation system, and uh, sometimes it lets you choose between uh, good and evil options, and uh, it's got a pretty unusual premise and that sort of thing, but uh, Lionheart is kind of a stripped-down game that uh, really uh, boils down to hack-and-slash combat, and the combat just uh, has some serious problems, and the game's got some uh, pretty dated production values for good measure, so uh, at best, uh, Lionheart is going to remind you of uh, the things you really enjoyed about past Black Isle games, but it's definitely not going to uh, live up to those in your mind. The best thing about Lionheart is the premise. In the game, uh, Richard the Lionheart's uh, crusades in, in the Dark Ages uh, basically led to this huge uh, kind of Pandora's box opening style of a cataclysmic event uh, that unleashed magic and evil and all kinds of stuff into the world, and this event was called the Disjunction. So the game takes place in the 16th century, uh, some centuries after this event, when humankind has sort of uh, regained a foothold, uh, but there's some kind of tainted uh, magic imbued races uh, living along with the humans and there's still plenty of monsters roaming the land, things like that. Uh, over the course of the game you'll meet uh, real uh, historical figures uh, from William Shakespeare to Leonardo da Vinci and, and others um, and you'll travel to some uh, real locations like, like Barcelona and so forth so uh, the game's alternate reality setting uh, is pretty unique. It's not, it's not just the same old swords and sorcery thing uh, even though uh, you know once you, once you strip away kind of the backstory and just look at the game for what it is in fact it really does kind of boil down to uh, slashing uh, monsters with swords and uh, shooting arrows and fleeing spells and that sort of thing. Lionheart uses what's called the special system which was created for the game Fallout. Uh, you use it to create your character and, and to also to level up your character and it's an open-ended system. There, there are no character classes, you don't just play as a fighter or, or a magic user or anything. Instead you apply skill points to your character and you assign uh, different uh, statistics to your character and, and uh, particular special abilities called perks. Uh, using these uh, various means you, you define your character along a certain line uh, whether you know to, to focus him or her on combat or, or magic or stealth or diplomacy in some cases. In Fallout the special system uh, enabled you to play as uh, some truly different types of characters and to play through the game using completely different means. In Lionheart, however, uh, you're, you're going to end up engaged in a lot of combat against a lot of monsters, so uh, although you have the option of not focusing on combat when developing your character, uh, basically, if, if you don't, you're going to end up with a character who's really weak and who's going to die a lot. Actually, you're probably going to die a lot no matter what, because the combat is pretty hard. Uh, but only unless you develop a, a really powerful kind of hybrid magic user fighter type of character, you're going to be in uh, real hot water pretty much uh, most of the time later in the game, and, and you might end up having to restart. So although the game uh, has this open-ended character generation system, it's really more of a guessing game. Uh, you know, are you going to pick the right skills uh, when creating your character and when leveling up? And that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, the system really uh, doesn't work well for this style of game. 
Very early into the game, you set foot in the city of New Barcelona, and here you kind of go on a lot of different quests and meet a lot of different characters, and it's much more of a true role-playing experience reminiscent of games like Baldur's Gate and Fallout, um, rather than uh, the sort of hack-and-slash gameplay more similar to Diablo uh, that Lionheart soon uh, kind of devolves into. Uh, once you leave Barcelona, pretty much from there on, uh, you're going to be hacking and slashing your way most of the time until you come to the conclusion of the game, uh, y you know, pretty soon, uh, pretty early on. Uh, Lionheart isn't a long game, but it does feel pretty long since you'll be trudging through so many battles. For a game that's all about the combat, uh, Lionheart's definitely got a lot of issues uh, relating to the combat in general. Uh, the game is locked at 800 by 600 resolution, and what this means in terms of the game is that you really uh, don't have much time when you first see an opponent uh, before that opponent is already upon you. So uh, if your character is trying to specialize in, in magic or in ranged weapons or something, you're only going to be able to squeeze off one or two shots before the, the thing you're trying to kill is right there in front of you and, and laying into you. The limited resolution also means you're going to be manually scrolling the screen a lot as you walk around. You can't even run in the game, so uh, sometimes you'll be kind of backtracking and just slowly walking across the maps, and uh, you can't annotate your auto map, so you're not always going to be sure where entrances are to particular areas. There are a few little uh, aggravating issues like that that just combine to make uh, the gameplay uh, not so fun, even when, you're, even when you're not engaged in combat. Combat happens at a sort of breakneck pace. Uh, enemies all just kind of shuffle towards you really fast and just start pounding you. You respond by left-clicking on the bad guys, which uh, makes you attack them. And as soon as one bad guy dies, you have to left-click on the next one. And since the enemies are pretty small and move around fast, uh, you're going to be kind of uh, moving your mouse around a lot, trying to catch the enemy on screen. Uh, the right mouse button, meanwhile, uses your spells and uh, Really, the, the combat system is pretty simplistic and, and just a matter of clicking on stuff and hoping uh, they die before you do. Uh, you can pause the action, but you can't actually target new opponents uh, while paused for some reason, though you can drink health potions and, and uh, use any other special items you may have, so uh, it's fortunate for that. If a game is going to be all about hacking and slashing through a lot of monsters, it might as well look good. But unfortunately, Lionheart uh, kind of doesn't. It, it really looks quite dated, and it uses technology, uh, indeed dating back a couple of years, a technology that the developer Reflexive Entertainment developed for uh, some of its older games. Uh, the, the enemies just uh, move in this kind of herky-jerky fashion, and so does your main player character, and uh, the characters end up uh, looking uh, kind of silly, if anything. Uh, so really, the game isn't impressive from that aspect. Some of the environments do look pretty good, but uh, they look very flat and static. There's very little animation in the backgrounds, and uh, the environments tend to be quite dark, and, and as mentioned, the resolution is limited. So uh, Lionheart looks like it could easily be a game from two or three years ago. It really doesn't sound that great either. There's some good voice acting uh, featuring some, some voice actors who uh, are very experienced uh, but other than that, there's, uh, there's little music. There, there are entire stretches of the game that are played through and, and uh, near silence. Uh, the music tends to loop, uh, th even though the compositions themselves are pretty good, and the rest of the sound effects are just kind of mediocre and, and forgettable, uh, not nearly as kind of hard-hitting and impactful as you'd hope for in, in a game that, again, is all about uh, action and lots of fighting. So in the end, Lionheart is, is not really an impressive game, especially when you consider uh, how many fantastic role-playing games have belonged to the Black Isle Studios brand. It does have some good points uh, in the game. You'll get to you know, help out guys like Leonardo da Vinci and William Shakespeare and uh, Cortez and, and so on. And, uh, this sort of thing is, is unusual for an RPG and interesting, but at the same time, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of the actual gameplay in Lionheart, uh, you'll end up with a game that is uh, similar to, but not as good as many other similar games that have come out before uh, that, that have just executed on the core action and, and the core role-playing features uh, better than Lionheart does. So if you're a forgiving Black Isle fan, uh, you might as well check it out, but uh, don't expect another Fallout or another Planescape Torment or anything like that.